What do you guys think of when I say the phrase soft launch? Something is soft launching. What are the first things that are conjured for you, Stugatz, uh, when I use that phrase and what it means? Uh, like a pre-launch, you know? Like the launch before the launch. Yeah. I feel yeah. like our show's been soft launching for about 18 years. Yeah. We're about to get ready, though. Watch out. We're almost there. Yeah. Uh -huh. I feel like the people soft launching are not really confident in what's going on. Yeah. And they're like, oh... Yeah. Let's do a little trial here. Dip but your not toe a in real... the water. Yeah. yeah, you say this yeah. is a soft launch in case it goes poorly before, like, the launch launch. You know what I mean? So, like, mm -hmm. this is like a just a practice launch just in case yeah, something it, goes wrong. It's like a launch, but yeah. with only circumstance and no pump. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, re it. the reason I asked the question is to ask all of you if we just saw the NBA soft launch Myers-Leonard. Oh yeah, that was a total soft launch. That was uh, that was an orchestrated effort by the Milwaukee Bucks and his his management team to reintroduce him into the public conversation, handpick a journalist to do the interview. In this case, it was Jeremy Shap. And then, whoa, what a coincidence! A couple days after publicly reemerging, he's on a team. How'd that happen? Well, it was all part of the plan. 10-day contract, the interview was with Jeremy Schapp. Like, how does this work? How do these tentacles work with all of the agencies working together to rehab and bring back a guy from a controversy that the league doesn't have a lot of experience dealing with? Basically, Myers Leonard is right on the fringe, to God's of not quite being valuable enough to bring any headaches to your customers, your Jewish customers, because on a video game, in one of the strangest scandals the Miami Heat have ever had, Pat Riley and Mickey Harrison are informed that he is being watched playing video games. He is being paid to play the video games, and he's used an anti-Semitic slur. And he's been out of the consciousness in the game for a long time. And then the Milwaukee Bucks, who don't really need whatever it is that Myers Leonard brings. They didn't need Chris Middleton. I mean, seriously. They need Myers Leonard? Sign him for 10 days. And the 10 day contract is just, it's basically, it's putting, it's licking your tongue and holding it up to the wind, right? To see, okay, what's the reaction going to be? Yeah, the 10 day contract in the NBA is the softest of launches for any player, if you really think about it. Uh, how about the one day contract? There's no such thing, is there? I think for the retired right? person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's. If they gave him a one day deal, that would have been a soft it's not launch. Not a launch, yeah. right? You're retiring. Yeah. It's an ending. That's, that's an honor. Close. It's, it's a great closing. Contract. You're right. Yeah. The, the one day one contract where you sign with a team, which is the one that's, that's outstanding an honor, right now. Somebody who has to go back to their original team and sign for one day because we've got to close the Brady. loop on whatever yeah, that is. They're with the wrong team late in their career. Like John Kuhn got one from the Green Bay Packers. He did. Ooh. He deserves one, Stugat. That's, Kuhn does. Uh, uh, that was, uh, if you've got a chant in your name. Right. Because people are excited that, uh, can we go through those career stats of John Kuhn to see what it is that they were chanting about? Because no one has. I think it is. Just see, Kuhn. but like you're, just you're attributing something about him that people do that chant. It's just, he has an ooh in yeah. his no name. Yeah. Like we've gone over this, that we're obsessed yeah. with that noise. Yeah, we do that at uh, the Magic City Frog. Manu. Manu. I understood that you were, you're obsessed with this sound, but I want the career stats of uh, John Kuhn, uh, who I'm pronouncing Kuhn because I'm uncomfortable chanting that. Uh, 217 carries, 658 yards, three, uh, three yards per carry. Uh, 19 tutties. I mean, how about that? Yeah, how many goal line weapons? His longest many, run ever was 18 yards. How many third and inches conversions does he have? All of, oh. all of them. All <laughs> of them. All of them. The uh, 19 touchdowns. Touchdowns are hard to come by. Combine 21 <laughs> yards on those 19 touchdowns. One fumble. I mean, guy never drops the ball except that one except time. Except that one yeah. time. That's correct. <laughs> his longest run is 18 yards. Stugatz, what was his big season? Uh, his big season was um, 84 carries, 200 and uh, looks like 81 yards, four touchdowns. He had a few catches that year as well out of the backfield. Nice season for Kune. <laughs> so what are you saying? That's the tipping point? You're saying that's the guy you can't give a one-day contract because he's not good enough? Because yeah. I, th I think once you've got the chant, it's what brings him over the edge. I would love to just watch a montage of slow football players with their career long runs. Like, I want to see Tom Brady's career long run. I just, I, I, those have to be like, that's weird. What's he doing there?
I think I saw one from Matt Ryan this year. Like oh, a, yeah. a 40 yard scamper from Matt Ryan. Matty Ice. Stugatz has an opinion here before we get into some local theatrics. Mike Ryan, did they suck you back in last night? Did the Miami Heat do like beating the Philadelphia 76ers? And I do like when, when Jimmy just does stuff like that. And I think a couple of days ago, he said that he was tired of losing. So that's encouraging. They were on a four game losing streak. They're about the team you expected them to be all year. And because they're that team, you haven't paid much attention to them. Kyle Lowry has missed two guys. No telling when he's coming back. Kyle Lowry has now missed nine games. He is paid like someone who's an integral member of their improvement, Sugats. He and, was supposed to be. I mean, well, but I'm saying they can't count on him in any no. in any kind of way, and they're paying him. He's the is he the third highest paid player on the team? If he's not third, he's fourth, and he's one. He's where a lot of money is going in a salary cap sport where it's that's where the winning is, Sugats, in the margins with value. It's great to have Bam and Jimmy. You'd third. like to have them at value. His cap number is twenty eight point three. It's great to have the expensive players play up to their contracts, but what you want is guys over producing on contracts that are bad for them and good for the team. Yeah. Kyle Lowry is a terrible contract for that team. Don't think they could have moved it at the deadline or they would have. Well, I mean, if uh, Pat Riley wasn't napping during the trade deadline, Dan, you know. <laughs> you can basically trade just about any contract for future relief these days. They've never gotten stuck under a contract. Not Dion Waiters, not Hassan Whiteside, who's still available in free agency if you guys want to welcome him back for that period of time in our lives. Huh. They're, they're really elite at getting just under the luxury tax apron. They're amazing at it. Well, I wanted to ask you guys this question, Stugatz, about the luxury tax, because the CBA is about to reopen. There's going to be a feud on a number of different things. And one of the things that the owners are said to be disagreeing about the most, Stugatz, is the luxury tax, and the fact that they can't control themselves, so they want a ceiling to control themselves. But now the Golden State Warriors are like, bleep your luxury tax. We got so much money, we don't care. <laughs> and the other owner's like, no, no fair. You said it was going to be even. And we'd all save the amount of money and save our business, and we wouldn't go over the salary cap. And Golden State's like, woo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> winning all the championships. We got five and six players we can pay because we do not care about your luxury tax. And the other owner's like, no fair, you're dominating. And there are some owners that care very deeply uh, because it's pretty punitive. Uh, I. But if you're willing to pay it, you're willing to pay right, it. There, that's, that's an advantage for your team and your organization. Like, too bad. There were some reports yesterday that the, the two sides were actually progressing on CBA talks, and it looks like a deal might be nearing very quietly did you guys know that the amnesty rule was a one-time thing it's gone it's it's totally gone because i was thinking i'm like it's surely it's been 10 years since we amnestied mike miller let's just use this thing on kyle lowry apparently it went away in the last cba so the amnesty thing teams got to amnesty one contract ever and we move on let's talk about the game last night though those two guys. cyclones yeah they were terrible yeah. cones no, we can we can get to that later. No, Go you ahead. guys choked last night again. <laughs> your team, the since easiest team that we've played all season. And if uh, you look at the final score, it doesn't seem as terrible. But it you lost. Yeah, yeah, yeah we lost. We you, lost. You lost your most important game of the season. Are you allowed to go to the games even though they're closed? No. But well, you're a team owner. Why we can't tried. You, go to you, the you games? can't. No, there's, you'd think we'd be able to, but we can't. No, why not? There's like a change in the ownership, and you need a pair of mutual license to be there on days that aren't Friday. A what? There's one day, one game day a week they allow fans and stuff, and but outside of that, you have to have like some sort of parimutuel. What does that mean? Well, I don't know, uh, there's a, there's an ownership change at that building to not get too in the weeds, and I think we can actually go to future Mondays and Tuesdays, being that we're owners. Yeah. But uh, during the holiday, I really wanted to go, and they're like, "No, actually, we're undergoing an audit right now, and the only people allowed on the premises are the players and people with licenses." No, I don't like that. You just tell, have your team hold out so that you like don't play unless you guys you guys are like the heart and soul of this team. You're the team owners. Thank you. You constructed this team. You should be allowed to go there and root on the, the gang. You know. But what? ever since we've gotten closer with them, they've been bad. So like yeah. I've kind of we've been talking wow. behind the scenes. Like I think we need to take a step wow. back. Maybe a step I don't back. know if we're wow. applying just. By existing around them, we might be pl applying too much pressure. I don't know. Like, so whatever, guys, whatever's happening so far this season ain't working. You so guys haven't earned their stripes yet. So we're going to try to but change it up and just back off them, let them do their thing. Immediately after you threw that into the group chat, like, we should back off. I came up with, like, a Buckeye sticker reward system. 
Jesus. You know, you win a game, especially you win a game, you get one Cyclone sticker. You win as a straight up underdog, two stickers. A couple guys on our team have empty helmets, though, this year. Oh, it's uh, been bad. Wow. That's embarrassing, huh? Yeah. It, it yeah. is. You know, you understand going against the defending champion, Robote Renegades, and the Wall Warriors, obviously super motivated from uh, your comments at Texas State Brazil. We don't need to get into that. That's that's in the past. But this was our first team that was kind of easy. And they took it to us. They won their first doubles match of the year against us. So battling through injury, gutsy effort, especially Why? from Monday. Still a long season. It what? is. No, it, look, well, you said it was a must win remaining. yesterday. The PPR is in our favor. Yeah, it was Waterloo. Yeah, well, Waterloo. Friday, some real Waterloo. We oh. gotta, we gotta beat the expansion. Can you go to that doubles. one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, we're gonna pack the front on. Come on out, really? Yeah. Is there a salary cap? What no. kind of ownership is this that you're only allowed to watch your, your team plays multiple See, times a week and you're only allowed at one of the days? Well, I mean, it's a young sport. I feel like it's, really, it's actually <laughs> really old. There's probably old like sport. cleaning people young, that are in the, the like, front on the days of the game. Why don't you just like put on like an outfit like you work there? Well, I don't know if you know this about uh, the Magic City Fronton, but even though we live in the free state of Florida, there's a there's certain COVID protocols that we're still, still yeah. That's why that's would I know that? that? That can't it's be true. Very, it's a very no. safe. COVID's over. Yeah, it's a bubble. No, it's not it's over. It's, over. A, it's not no, over. It's a very safe. It's not over at the hospital. It's like caloric intake, right? You have zero COVID on one day, so you can exactly. have all the COVID the mm. next day. Ah. Uh. Mm. Why okay. didn't you get John Ruiz to come in and just start, like, greasing some of these players or refs or something? You know what I mean? Like, you're close with him now. Just have him come and, like, <laughs> motivate your players to play better with financial benefits for winning. Uh, well, that's where the sickers come in, Billy. But uh. there's actually a lot of celebrities that show I mean, up to like highlight. six years old. No, no, they no. care about stickers. You, if you're a local sports fan, I saw Lawrence Taylor was at a game. Oh, uh, we had Chris Chambers at a game. We had El Duque at a game. These people definitely aren't being paid to be there. No, either. no, no, no. no. Not there, there's big time <laughs> celebrities that show up. There's huge celebrities that show up to these games. And Friday, all the stars should be out. When the Dahada Devils and Sessa Cyclones get together, you can mm. throw the records out. Yeah. I like Billy. Want to point out that stickers as a reward is something that should end about six years old. That's for children. On college, you guys know college football. Yes, the Buckeyes. You know, right. I know the Buckeyes. Yeah. Michigan. Put this on, up on the, the thank you, uh, Chris, for all of your knowledge of college football traditions. Yes, the stickers on the helmet are a thing that I recognize. Yeah. But Billy is correct when he says, "And then you give people orange slices or a juice box because they played a good game at seven years yeah, old." My, my daughter is one years old, and at the end of her music class that she goes to, it's like, "Who wants a sticker?" And they all go running up to get the stickers. I don't think that's going to work Gen with the Cyclones, gentlemen. With all due respect. I've taken these people out to an all expense paid Brazilian steakhouse dinner. I've welcomed them into my home. You should take away from them. And after every Friday, I buy IPAs no point. matter no matter the result. They're getting lazy. They're getting entitled. What did you took them out to a nice dinner? You give them beers and all this stuff. Start taking things from them. What you know did, what I mean? We're what gonna did, try the stickers and then we're gonna try it your way. Tough love. Okay. Tough love. What did Chris Cody do at this Texas Day Brazil dinner that uh, affected team chemistry? I tried to motivate the team by, yeah. you know, we had been talking throughout the dinner about, hey, the Wall Warriors are improved. And I, you know, tongue in cheek with phones up, I see I'm being recorded. I threw up a bleep the Wall Warriors yeah. at the end. It, like, you know, it was tongue in cheek. Betrayal. Obviously, we were a little concerned about them because they are an improved roster. And at like this that. point, I'm going to say it. They're better than we are. Way better. So, wow. you know, like, beat, yeah. ass. everybody's I mean, better it. than yeah. everybody's better than us right now. But yeah. you as an owner provided them with bolts and board material. Yeah. No, I mean, that's you not your at, job. You can look at it however you want to look at it. I, I tried to motivate our team. It like didn't that. work. It didn't. Like the way it played out, it looks like what I did was wrong. And I'll, if I have to eat it, I'll eat. I'll take responsibility right. for my actions. No, okay. I want to see these players but taking you, responsibility you for their actions. I mean, Catch the fucking <laughs> pelota! Oh no, you know I mean, you come should on be now. more worried about the fact that there seems to be snakes in the grass that are releasing those videos. Remember this happened with the I Steelers. Put it out. Well, <laughs> okay, uh, that's not supporting your That'd theory. Be fun. There. I don't yes, know, Billy. I fun, wacky guy. Kind of say, remember when Antonio Brown did that thing, and then it was like a whole thing with the Steelers. I was confident. Tomlin I thought, got upset. I thought I could put that out, and our t the Cyclones that I know would would take wow. that video that, that, and be yeah, like, you know what, we got team. this. Well, not real there, there are new guys out there, yeah. but in in owning this not team, really. I I truly have questions over how Bruce Sherman sleeps at night. Mm. Because I care so deeply, I want to trade everyone after a loss, even though that's not allowed by the bylaws. 
But I, I don't understand. Like, we don't really have our own money in this outside of a very expensive dinner at Texas Day Brazil, which, you know, IOU's coming. There are emotional moves often made in sports, and it's why sometimes you have to separate the general manager and the coach because the general manager has to be reasonable and not emotional about how he makes his decisions. Jason Elam signed a one-day contract. I mean, what are you doing? Hey, Elam. 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 I don't That's care. A, okay. So did Ike Hilliard. I okay. mean, <laughs> Ike Hilliard. What? Yeah. Get at Ike Hilliard. Ike Hilliard. It's surprising. <laughs> and Baselli. <laughs> Where else did he play other than Jacksonville? Did Baselli play Green somewhere? Bay, I think. I don't Houston. have any. Yeah, he was yeah. A, the uh, number one expansion draft pick of the Houston Texans. Huh. Uh, can we get the sound of Terrell Buckley leaving an XFL field? Uh, this is a very sad uh, video audio experience. Terrell Buckley, I'm not sure which XFL team he coaches, but they were performing very poorly. And behind him, you can see that there are no fans. There's nobody in the uh, in the stadium, but he's giving an emotional interview about how his team is playing. Welcome back to Orlando here with Coach Buckley. Coach, how do you change this momentum? We got to get different guys in there. Obviously, we got, I got guys out there that are not competing, that are not making plays. So we got to get people in there, young men that want to play, that want to compete and make plays. I, I just saw you walk up and down this sideline and look some guys in their faces. What did you see out of your team? I'm seeing guys not performing. Tell them, look at the scoreboard. They got to perform. This is how I literally, I want to play. Can we send this to our team? Do that on Friday. Walk up we and down the front. Back, I know, I mean, it's just. <laughs> I'm going to hit the front on on Friday. I'm going to have a vibe to me. All right. Well, you guys might just throw a chair as soon as I walk in there. I need them to know. I need them to know. Let them know. Careful with El Duque. Yeah. (laughs) You guys bragged and talked about your dominant team and you were dominant for a couple of years. And then you got all involved. You got smart. You thought you knew something. You're owners of the team. You got you got pictures of Chris Cody hanging over the front on as an owner of one of the teams. And uh, and it all went to your head, and as soon as you guys got involved in the draft process, you went right to last place, and your team stinks, and Bradley can't catch the ball. That's not fair. Chris, you were involved in the draft process last year, and this was a communal effort. We, we were the glory franchise in this very young league, and right now we're going through some growing pains with some new players in there because the league rules legislate parity, and it's difficult. We should have been able to keep our entire team because we were dynastic. Now we got some new players in the fold, and they're learning what it takes to be a cyclone. You, We're gonna be okay. You've, this is just like last spring season. I'll say Dan. It. This is Mike Fuentes' fault. Wow. Oh, oh come wow. on, man! I don't wow. want to talk about Mike Fuentes. I'm willing to listen. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 you just want to hear someone blamed, and the show derail even further. I mean, he's our head of scouting. No, you guys, wow. look, you guys have taken. I'm not gonna let you do this. The Heat played an interesting basketball Accountability, game. Accountability, Dan. Uh, and you're just going deeper in the weeds on on what part of the studio can we make this less interesting with like where do i have to go who do i have to talk to to make the last 10 Maybe minutes gino fuentes even should have made the picks, yeah, you know? his brother even worse yeah we need more fuentes is around here well that's they have what, a sister but that, she doesn't work for yeah, us yet. that's too bad i'm sure she will soon i'm positive yeah. she will soon and then you guys will ask for her to talk to us during cyclone segments i don't want to do I'm sure. I, like, get her on the phone. Go ahead. You know what? Call the Fuentes sister and get her on the phone so I can, so you can interview her about the Cyclones instead of last night's heat game where James Harden's about to beat you at the very end with a uh, – Mike, you were terrified. You were, that ball I, leaves- I was watching Stars uh, Canucks. Rick Tockett got him playing better <laughs> hockey. All right, really? You, Mike, yeah. you're not going to be allowed – Tockett's to- a coach, huh? Yeah, yeah. I was told, like, oh, interesting things are happening, and I flipped to the uh, – I flipped to the screen. And I was like, "Oh, they're in the post game, but they look happy." And then I saw the highlight. Really impressive layup. Oh. Oh, how about that? You're oh. not. Uh, I think you're officially banned if they get Goran Dragic. Uh, oh, you, we can get Goran Dragic. You, you're, the dragon. you're banned. Huh? You're totally banned from caring oh, wait, about no, this I'm team. Back if, no. if, 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 I don't know whether you can get him Goki's or not. Goki's coming back. I'm in. I don't know whether you can get him or not. I just wanted to you get him. You can always get him. I wanted oh, to you get... know. <laughs> Bring back Whiteside and Dragic. I wanted to simply get your attention. If a if beating Philadelphia, there are 20 games left in the season. Philadelphia is what you've considered their chief rivals. Stu guys, I don't know if you've seen the stats this century of the standings, but the Miami Heat over the la- in the Eastern Conference, the Miami Heat have been a good deal better than everyone else in the conference. Behind them, ni- 19 games back, the Celtics. Indiana, this is over the century. Mm. Indiana, 54 games back. Raptors, 109 
games back. Mike considers, not the Knicks, not anybody else, he considers the Sixers the team that he hates the most. Last night, you go into Philadelphia. This is a good Philadelphia team. It's better than your Heat team. And Mike has never been scared of these Sixers because Embiid, he doesn't believe Embiid and Harden are going to free throw you to death over the course of a series. And They've just given me no reason over my lifetime to ever fear them. I've seen them get past the second round maybe twice in my life. Yeah. Uh, they they're not Not with these guys though. Not it, you've seen that. No, I haven't seen that. No, they haven't done that since AI. They haven't gotten past the second round since AI. Just so you know, you were kind of putting words in my mouth a little bit. Historically, Celtics are Miami's biggest rival. And, and the Knicks are probably up there. But the one that gets my blood pumping the most you don't are these the, awful people from you, Philadelphia. You don't hate the Celtics for whatever the reason is. This is the team that you hate. I mean, I do, but I hate this team so much more. And well, you beat the Celtics, so I yeah. Mean. The, these people just talk and talk and talk, and they're Philadelphia, and all that uh, that encapsulates. And you know, they're just genuinely awful people. And I don't understand like the the bravado that comes to it because the franchise historically has not been any good, at okay. least as long as I've been I need, alive. I need to stop you. Genuinely, the eighties they were very uh, very good. Yeah, but I wasn't born when they were winning titles. So okay. I've seen them be in one NBA Finals. That, that's. You know, the Raptors, in my mind, are a more prestigious Eastern Conference franchise. Uh, they are closer to the Heat over the century. They're 109 games back over the century. But I can't. 109 is a lot. I know, but they're, they are closer than everybody but Indiana and the Celtics. The Heat have dominated. Well, Indiana is a bigger rival, too, historically. But I can't allow you to say they're genuinely awful people uh, because our show is now descending into a place where I cannot keep track of the people that we're feuding with. Stu Gatz is now feuding with Wisconsin. Wisconsin, yeah. uh, from th all the things that he said yesterday, Stu Gatz visits. He's a very rude guest. He visits the place where people treat him with great hospitality, and then he leaves the place and rips it, says you can't do anything there, and it's boring. Be a better place. I mean, Wisconsin, relax, okay? I took some, listen. I took some shots at your state, in particular Kenosha, Wisconsin, because it's boring and there's nothing to do. And I called it a dark state. What, you know do, what? You, what do you want to do? What do all of you want to do? Like, what is Milk this a cow style, man. style of wheeling and dealing that you guys need constant like entertainment? Like, What What are you guys expecting to do when you go plays? Because it was the same thing in Utah. I was like, oh, this place is boring. What do you do? I don't know. But I hear all about it's Madison. Hard. I hear about but this place and question. that place. He did. He said, I don't know. I drive through the state and I unfairly judge you. I mean, that's what I do I when I go to Wisconsin. I look yes. around yes. and I assess. Yes, I assess. I saw right. Kenosha. It looks terrible. I mean, what do you want from me? And now everyone in Wisconsin is mad at me. And what I'm telling you is, listen, I'm just making pitches here to Aaron Rodgers. And the way I'm doing it is by reminding him what a lousy state he's lived in for the last 18 years. Oh, this is what this is but about. But you okay. got him for 18 years. And you know what? You've had Bart Starr. You've had Lynn Dickey. You've had Brett Favre. You had Aaron Rodgers. You had Dom Mikowski, the magic man. You have had an amazing <laughs> run of quarterbacks. I've had nothing. Nothing. I've had Zilch. Tom Tupa. A backup punter was my uh, was my backup quarterback. Played in an AFC championship game. I don't want to hear about it. I am trying. It's not about you, Wisconsin. It's not about Kenosha. It's not about how dark that entire state you're, is. You're lashing okay? out. You're lashing out. You're, 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 and there's no sun. It's, it's not about the sun going down at 245. It's not about Wisconsin being a shithole. <laughs> it's about me wanting a quarterback. All right? And your town being a shithole. But relax. I'm teasing. I only do, th do this as a sales pitch to my guy Aaron Rodgers. Again, I'll remind you. Star Dickie Mikowski. Shithole. Sounds like Billy wants to move to Kenosha. And you have Lombardi. I mean, what else do you want? I've had nothing. I have had Rich Kotite. Ah, yes. <laughs> and you have Lombardi and Mike McCarthy. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, give me something. Anything. I had Gase. <laughs> After another team already found out he wasn't good. One of my favorite insults of a person is ass wipe, just to dismiss a human being as a wipe of the ass. A hole of shit.
describing a place that people take pride in being from as a hole. I'm assuming this is what we're talking about is a hole in the ground for your shit. A, you're talking about a hole in a public restroom in a bad place. Where I don't know. I think that's disputable. It is. Because is the shithole where the shit comes out of or where the shit goes? Oh, Calling someone an asshole, it's just a different, like, it's your shithole. Oh, that's not oh, what I wow. thought it was. I didn't, I didn't think that a... I didn't, something today. No, no, I, well, I don't think imagine that's... Li- living get someone from imagine Webster's living on, in a shithole. So you think I, it's a rim? I don't think right. this is correct. I think, I believe it's a toilet. It's a hole where people go to the bathroom where you don't have toilets. No, 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 that's called the shitter. Hmm. Mm. The, the hole in the ground... Well, the well, shitter could also be where the poop comes from. Yeah, it's derivative. Oh, that's right. It could be the, the person. Are, oh, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's a shitter. Okay. Oh, hold on. You guys... This is one of those verb-adverb things, I think, yeah, man. Yeah. Like noun, I, I pronouns. Talking, one of those. Noun, yeah. yeah. Where's the comma in this sentence, you know? Mm-hmm. I want to go around the room I, and have each of you think, vote. Uh, after sentence, because yeah. then you ended it with a proposition. Mm, yeah. A uh, preposition, not a proposition. Oh, really? Grammar. Well, proposition could have been included. Are you sure yeah. about that? <laughs> Let's. I mean, we are talking about butt stuff. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, uncomfortably so, but you guys are taking it there. This is not what I was talking about. I you was... wanted to do this. I mean, well, I didn't start this. You started this. You, uh, I you... did. St- no, they started it. He... All I did, I was making a sales pitch to Aaron Rodgers. I mean, again, they've had a storied history, perhaps the most storied history in the history of the NFL, and I want their quarterback. And the way I'm trying to get their quarterback is by reminding them as to what a shithole they live in. I mean, that's now, it. Now, Marion Webster. I love you, Wisconsin. Marion Webster do. and Urban Dictionary both have it as like a place that you can go to. Yeah, that's but, just unpleasant. So yeah. that would be what Dan was well, saying, I mean, like a hole that's just filled with be, shit. But, but that could be the asshole, too. Yeah. It could be. Uh, like if it was Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and they ended up in like a butt, you'd be like, wow, this is wow. the most unpleasant place. That would place be a great shithole. Yeah. I, I want to go around the room, though. What? One one day contract. Giannis. I'm just saying the oh, state of Wisconsin. Were Marquette, they had it good. Marquette. I didn't know what call yeah, Mark we were doing there. Yeah, I thought that was one day contracts. No, for a because second. there's that rumor uh, about Dwayne that he likes the. Hey, not enough. Oh. <laughs> See, but here, Mir- Miriam Webster, Marquette. Miriam Webster. It's confusing because there's three definitions, Dan, and like number three says vulgar slangs anus. So like it could be. It's all three. I mean? All the three are on part. here. Yeah, a toilet. A place where shit is, or an anus. You know, Miriam and Webster are two different people. It's not like a woman named Miriam Webster. Robin Yount. He I said too. <laughs> I wish to go around the room and just ask you: Am I the only one who, when I hear a place described as a shithole, I am thinking of a public toilet in a place that does not have toilets? where people just go to the bathroom in a hole in the ground. That's what I thought a shithole was. I'm the only one here who thought that that was the insult. I mean, I've never called a place a shithole, so I'm the wrong person to ask. I always never consider, even thought about I it. always consider it a shithole a location, but I forget who brought up the point that it could be the actual hole that the shit comes out of, and I think in light of new information, it could be both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've literally just called a place a shithole. What are you talking about? It's a sales pitch. Wisconsin, relax. Stugat. See a Teddy Aguera. I mean. How are you pronouncing that? Teddy Aguera. Okay. I thought, Preposition. I thought you swallowed your H there. Yeah, I like to do that. I wanted to titillate and excite the room here because even though you guys don't like advanced stats, uh, Greg Cody is out today. He is handling private business. He will be back next week. But I learned of a stat from Pro Football Outsiders, and Greg and Stugatz are formed. They're done learning. They don't want any new information. They don't want advanced stats. They don't want... I just want Aaron Rodgers. They don't want to know why Aaron Rodgers is good. Just uh, let me watch the games. I don't want to learn anything more. I know what I know. I don't need to do any more learning. Please keep your numbers to yourself. But Pro Football Outsiders has said that Mike McDaniel is the second most aggressive coach in the league based on something I had never heard of before. I don't know how it's tabulated. I'm just learning of it. Their aggressive index. Wow. I need the whole list. I like it. I feel like we could get a better name. A guts meter, maybe? Mm. Guts meter. Who's number one? 
Uh, Nick Sirianni is oh, number please. one. Makes sense. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Idiot yeah. meter, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> He's got. What do you mean, idiot meter? I didn't say that. He's got you. You, you were the one that just said say that. It. We all heard you. I didn't just, hear. We all heard you. That was an outside thought. That was not something that you said in the other room. It wasn't something you said in Stugatz's ear. It wasn't something that you said <laughs> in the privacy of the show that I'm you not do. Certain. That's a better one. That, that the better show, the one that you do off air, than the one that you do I on air know. when talking to Tony. You've been hanging around Stugatz too much. It doesn't work when Sugat says something and then he goes who said that? What happened when there? You did. What yeah. happened there? You know what happened. I'm not certain. It's, it doesn't really work. It's when Greg. When you guys, he's, he's, he had a personal he's, matter. He had a personal matter. Nick, How about that? Nick Sirianni God bless football. Check out all their comedy <laughs> stylings working together. 1.57. I don't know how they arrive at this number for Sirianni. 1.57. I'd like to know how they arrive at the number. I'm assuming it's just goes for it on fourth down with that tush push. They're gonna. They're gonna. Yeah. Bang. What does 1.57 mean? It's made up. Yeah. It's, this is like the Bill James school of let's just make up numbers and give it names for things because it's it's the off season. What are we gonna talk? What's about? What's McDaniel's number? Uh, yeah. One point five two. Oh, it should, oh, be, wow. high. It should be high. Yeah. Yeah. It should be high. Right. Right. A running so decimal. Close. Right, right. right. Five tenths of a point. Is that five right. tenths? Right behind him, though. Right behind him. <laughs> so what is like bad? Is it going to the negative or Wait. like point two? Is let's guess who the worst is. Wait. Yeah. Yes. Wait, does that does that represent the amount of points that their aggressiveness has won? Her drive. Let's let's go down to the Ron Rivera portion of this list. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to know the number, but okay. McCarthy. I don't know. I'm asking you because McCarthy's you be guys wrong. have already. What you've done here is I'm not interested in your index. I want to change the name. Oh, my coach is second. What's the number mean? And then you throw the questions back at me. Arthur Smith is yeah. third, a tenth of a percentage point. That's a surprise. Behind, That's too close. Behind McDaniel at 1.51. But I don't know what the aggressive index is. I don't know how it's tabulated. I don't know what that number means. I'm simply telling you there is an aggressive index. This is what I'll tell you. I just found an article, and this is the headline of the article, so we will quickly stop talking about this index forever. Mike Tomlin, one of the least aggressive coaches in the NFL per, per football outsider's metrics. Guy doesn't blink, Dan. You're telling me this guy's not aggressive? Get out of here. That tells nose. you how aggressive this aggressive index is. Are you saying it's racially biased? Hmm. You said that. Yeah. You did say that. I said, I said he doesn't mean, blink. What, I love that, Roy. I love that. What do you think he means by that? Exactly. <laughs> oh, Stu Gatz. If you could only see who comes up the rear of this list. Hell yeah. I don't want to know. <laughs> Sala. Gabby oh, Union. Oh, right. Hey. Hey. Sala and Belichick. <laughs> Gabby, Belichick. Gabby Union. I'm so art. We are Wait still talking line. about that. Wait a minute. A Wait a minute. Yes, she wrote about it in a book, but I just want everyone... Who said that? That's right. What <laughs> happened there? Stugatz, Stugatz's reaction. I want you to go back in time. Mike Ryan is making a joke about the sex life of Gabby Union and Dwayne Wade as revealed by Gabby Union in her book. I didn't hear that. And that's what, was, that's what just happened. I didn't say that. And, and Stugatz went... Full Ed McMahon. It wasn't in the book. Hell. That is Stugatz, which is also the sound Stugatz would make if exploring that region centrally. I don't think that happened. Oh, she didn't explore that in the book. I thought she explored it in the... B.J. Serhoff. Hell. That's going to be your late and move life. (laughs) It's a late... (laughs) Late in life move is what I meant. That's to yes, fine. yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Didn't even notice it. Is that a preposition? Oh, it wasn't in the book. No, it was in the ass. Hey, oh, hey, that was Mike Fuentes. <laughs> hey, more focus. Hey, focus on scouting over there, Fuentes. <laughs> Less laughing, more scouting. We got the Tejada Devil. David Tyree should be in the Hall of Fame. Like, for the moment. The Giants Hall of Fame. Yeah, like a moment Hall of Fame. Oh, his helmet. Mm. That's what he used to catch the ball. Yeah. Did he have a glove? Uh, I believe so, yeah. I'd inspect that glove. You should you should open a moment Hall of Fame. It doesn't have to just be sports. It could be like... A one shining moment Hall of Fame. Moment. If anyone had a moment in life. I like that. Can other moments negate the good moments? 
I mean, Tyree will always have that moment. Like, I remember, I, d I didn't see it, but I saw there was a documentary. Remember that, like, Hitchhiker? There was, like, a like a viral thing that he, like, saved someone by, Kai, like... Kai, Kai the Hitchhiker. Yeah, That Kai. takes a tragic oh, yes. turn. That yeah. whole story takes a terrible turn. I didn't see it. It's, it sounds like you may have seen it. I didn't see it, uh, but, like, Kai had a moment, but then... It took a bad turn. So would Kai be out of the moment Hall of Fame? I think the the Netflix doc is called Axe Murderer, Dan. If I'm not mistaken, huh. not to spoil or anything. You know? I'm not doing this. So like, I just know how this works. When I say stuff like this, you're gonna say go outside and do it. If I went outside right now and <laughs> tried to it. hitchhike, how long do you think it would take for me to get That's like a really in a car? Good question. Because I feel like hitchhiking, it sounds easy, but who's going to pick somebody up? Like in this in 2023, you'd dead. be good at it. I hitchhiking's think. dead. Because you can't be too like wavy. Because you know what I mean. You have to be subtle. The thumb, like, I don't know, but gotta, it's just like... No, gotta, I think you have to sell panic. You have to give off likable, but Not yet panic. I need help. Panic. What do you mean? Not I'm panic. Like, I need to get somewhere. I need I help, flat tire. but I won't kill you. No, it's a sale. You have to give off, I need help, but I won't kill you. No one wants the cool hitchhiker. They want to help out someone really? in distress. Yes. You got to prioritize pickup trucks. Mm -hmm. Right. Those are for... Just hop in. They hit you Those with are the... the most likely to pick you up. But that's because... windy. I'd rather sit inside. Well, yeah, but... but... That's how... You have a separation. Or a big like, rig. Where you gotta go? Maybe a big yeah. rig, like a large mall. I need to go 30, 30 miles north. Hop in. Uh, Take me where you're going. Yeah. Tony, the name of the documentary is The Hatchet Wielding Hitchhiker, not The Axe Murderer. Ah, I was close. That's a fine. Yeah, it's like a cousin. Take me to the Honda Classic. <laughs> Take me to the Drive Pink Stadium. Oh, we're not going that far. What would you what would you wear, Stugatz? Because you're giving advice. Like what what is the most like when desirable I, outfit for a hitchhiker to wear. Pee Wee I'm Herman not, always had the thing, like right. the, the, the stick with the thing like attached the to it. Like the bindle or whatever it's yeah. called. I'm not saying my advice is the right advice. In If Chris were to do this and he wanted to get into a car quickly, he needs to give off emergency panic, not laid back and cool. That's all I'm saying. I, or, but I disagree. In my opinion. I don't, I don't think that panic is the best way to get oh. somebody to pick you up. Although I understand what you're saying. You're saying someone in need of desperate help is more likely to get help. I think more people are going to drive right past that person, uh, scared, move around them. It just takes one, though, Dano. Understood, but that's all it takes for anything that we're talking about here is one. And they're saying I guess you're right. more probable is less panic to give off some sort of soothing. But I, I think it's a specific type of person that would ever pitch, pick up a hitchhiker. I think I need you need to look meek. Yeah. <laughs> you need to look meek. Like you need to just look beaten down and make someone like feel bad. Like please, really? please, it's I need this. Like it can't just be like, hey, I'm hitchhiking. What's up, man? Like you gotta seem like you gotta have a little shrug to you. You gotta have cool, a little. I think the cool would play into it a little bit. You know what I mean? I'm you not... also can't like if it's a car that's broken down with like multiple people, you can't stop because like you then just assume that you're gonna get jumped by the other people, right? Or like you start. Like, I I know it sounds horrible. I know it no, sounds right. horrible. Keep it moving. Always keep it so moving. It's Dan. <laughs> I see the judgment in your eyes towards me. This is the thing, Dan. We live in a society right now where you can't trust people. Mm -hmm. No good deed goes unpunished. Exactly. Right. So you see things, you hear stories, and and sure, few and far between. The story where you go to help out like a little old woman who has like a flat tire on the side of the road and the blinkers, and then sure enough, someone that's in cahoots with her comes around, parks behind you, they jump you, they steal your wallet, they steal your car, they steal your sun pass, whatever it is that they're after. Sun they pass. take it from you. You know what I mean? But it only takes one for you to think, I can no longer help people. Not not surprised that you would treat that transaction as <laughs> many people would with a lot of fear. I, uh, the look you saw in my eye was not that, though. The look you saw in my eye was a degree of shame that I have because I came home the other day and my wife, as I explained to her what had happened, said... You got tricked again by a scamster, didn't you? Uh, because there was somebody uh, right as, as uh, the entrance to the highway, there was somebody on the street uh, with what looked like a broken down van who came over to the car, looked uh, a little worried and kept pointing to it was clearly a family in the car. It was a family. It was not a family that could attack me. It was a family of people. He you looked, don't know that. You don't know that. They start martial arts at a very young age. Like any, you need to treat any level of person as a potential adversary. Jump by kids. Especially in Miami. But the, there were kids in there, and you're, you're right. Um, but the, the thing that convinced Decoys. me. Decoys. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, I, well, that's what it would be if indeed I was fooled as I think I was. <laughs> 
this person had the props of a family. I was not going to help the this. The props? Like they came out of casting? I believe that this is, was a scam. I believe that this they were all in on whatever this was, and those <laughs> kids may have been paid actors. Whatever it was, that person got $100 from me because oh, I was trying no. to help. Wow. I was they went home. We hit the lottery. And then, and then worse wow. than... Call the Mercedes again. But, but then the next move, They took though, cash? The next move... Yes, they took <laughs> cash. The next move was for him to try in a panic to sell me all of his jewelry. Like, oh, did you that, buy that it? Was, no, I did not. I stopped. Wow. I, I stopped. Could have been a good his case opened up. No, and he just had no, like... no. He was that cool. He's like, I need more than that. I need to get back to my home country. <laughs> well, he that, realized I mean, he had a sucker. Jeez, oh, Dan. Yeah. He didn't help him. Needed a flight. He had a family with him. Yeah, on the MacArthur Causeway? Got it. Got. Yes, it was getting right on. Yes, it was getting right. It was right on the... Uh, the median on the edge and uh, she, Sweetwater is his country. I hope they Sorry. made it. <laughs> the key phrase uh, that my wife uttered was, they got you again, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, wow. I think if I'm hitchhiking, I bet he boop it. Well, what's this bindle you're talking about? What does about? that mean? You know the old Betty Boop cartoon? She just like raises up a legging oh. and just puts a thigh out there and just puts a thumb out. Betty booping it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. You guys are talking about a Pee Wee Herman. Uh, this is the old uh, walking on the tracks, uh, the the old hobo cartoon. That's it's, a lo- it's a long stick with a little bag attached to it. Like, you know, you have one, you know, a couple but of apples I, uh, somebody, and a pair uh, of pants. I mean, that's what you think is in there? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> you think all your worldly possessions are in there. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, this is all I have. This. You know? Okay. Uh, uh, you it, don't know there weren't a couple apples in no, there. No, put it a on the pole. A couple socks. <laughs> Juju at Levitard Show. Put it on the pole. Have you ever carried a bag with just a pair of pants and a couple of apples? <laughs> <laughs>